This is fully modular storage with built-in factory, composed entirely from blueprints. This factory already produces and stores 40 various items. And in the next video, I will expand this factory all the way up to a total of 60 items. Everything from iron plates, power shards and weapon ammo, to radio control units, supercomputers and turbo motors. There is a game developer saying that if you allow players to optimize the fun out of the game, well, they will do exactly that. For this reason, satisfactory developers were quite hesitant to add blueprint designer into the game. And 4x4 blueprint size limitation is aimed to deny level of optimization where you just press one button and beat like 10% of the game by plopping a factory the size of the biome. On the surface, this size discourages any factories confined in 4x4. But with some clever planning, you still can make huge mega projects composed entirely out of blueprints. For example, here I have horizontally aligned 4x4 factories stacked vertically to produce and store up to 12 items on the first floor of each module. Main focal points here are the overall mega project layout for interesting exterior design, layout of every subsection for ease of access, clever delegation of machinery with specific recipes between several blueprints, and finally, easy and convenient connections for belts, power and even fluids between those blueprints. And today in this video, I will explain all those bits for two modules of my personal storage. So, in the end of the day, you will be not only aimed by the blueprints itself, but also would have the nice idea of how to make your own modular storage. And by the way, I share my blueprints for free in the pinned comment down below. For normal support there are all those clicky clicky things down below. And for the super support there are always super stickers, so maybe I can afford even more SSD storage while editing my 4K videos. Thanks! Right, these are the items that are handled in the first module. And these are the items that are handled in the second module. So, this is your locomotion and electronic items all the way up to tier 8. And while I already covered a lot of underlying principles in previous video with steel and biowise modules, there are still a lot of new and interesting features in these two modules. Better yet, I am even retrofitting my previous blueprints with some of new ideas. So. With all this in mind, let's check out schematics for the first module. Alright, so this is full schematic for the module and there are a lot of things going on. So first of all, alternative recipes, really important. Underlying principle over here, if it saves space, I will probably end up using it. But there are several, well, requirements for that. For example, quickwire stator. This recipe saves quite a lot of space. Since I have production of quickwire in this particular blueprint, well, it makes sense. Same goes for the silicon board. For example, well, it doesn't save a lot of space, but if you compare it to the standard recipe where you need to use plastic and well, if you involve the plastic and all logistics involved, yes, it does save a lot of hassle and a lot of space. There are more simple things like steel screws, steel rods, solid steel ingots, they basically save a lot of space, so there is that. Alright, production ratios, really important and, well, kinda convoluted. At first it looks like I just made the ratios from, I don't know, somewhere, but actually they are kinda carefully tailored. To the machinery itself. I made something about like 100 factory blueprints and I know my ratios for the machinery. I know how many machines I can fit per floor, I know how many machines I can fit per blueprint. For example, constructors. I know for sure that I can fit like 12 constructors per floor, but in this particular case, in this modular blueprint, I know that I'm using both sides for the connections. So this kind of limits me to only 8 constructors. Also there is notion of overclocking. For example, over here is 8.75 constructors. I can just pop one floor of constructors, eight constructors and overclock two of them to make this production ratio. Assemblers, for example over here, I am using 2.5 assembler. Why is that? Well, I can just plop one assembler, overclock it to 250% and have all my production for stators for personal storage and for the motor production. This way I use just less manifolds, I'm not making like extra manifold taking up all the space. And well, if you can save it, uh, not use like two or three machines, but use just one machine, why not? But what if you want to use like several assemblers? What if you want to use like five assemblers over here with the rotors? I know that I can fit that in one single floor. How's that? Well, quite simple. Just use verticality. I can make one connection from beneath and another connection from up. Quite simple, but well, you need to figure it out. So there's that, 6 assemblers per floor. But what about manufacturers? Well, it's quite simple, one manufacturer per floor, but you can fit extra constructors, you can fit 4 constructors or maybe even 5, or you can fit 
two assemblers. Next up, since you already have the idea about how much machinery you can fit in one single floor, how much machinery you can fit per blueprint approximately, well, you just need to pile up the things between four different piles. Because, well, we have four blueprints and we need to separate our machinery between those blueprints. Alright, so these are four piles for four blueprints for four levels of our module. Quite simple. Level number one. Over here I have only two floors because, well, the first floor taken up by the containers itself. And I'm doing a total of six foundries over there on the one floor and eight constructors on the third floor. Same goes for the, well, blueprint number two. Over here I have eight constructors for the copper sheets. Two of them will be overclocked. And then I will have quite a clever thing with the constructors and smelters over here. I will do just four smelters melters for constructors per floor. This way I can just avoid to have extra two manifolds. I can just feed directly smelters into the constructors. Uh, then we have uh, this thing over there. Looks like a lot, but actually it is not. So we have one floor with the rotors and then we have one floor with all those things. For example, this is two assemblers. This is one assembler and this is also one assembler. And obviously the third floor can be taken up by all the constructors. In the final level, it is not really a dense level. It's really easy to implement. Only one manufacturer, one assembler and five constructors. Well, three floors is totally doable. And after just examining all the things once again, I just think that, well, I can just move AI limiters over there because I already have copper sheet and quick wire connection over there for silicon connectors and silicon boards. So I already have the materials for the AI limiters there and I have a lot of free space over there and I can just ease up the pressure over here in this particular pile by just moving two assemblers over there. Alright, so this is the full stack of module number C and there are obviously four levels for the blueprints. The level number four, three, two and one. On the first level we have our containers on the first floor, then we have six foundries for iron ingots, uh, copper ingots and solid steel ingots over there. Then we have one floor for constructors to produce our wires and cables over there. And after that we have level number two. With level number two we have eight constructors for the copper sheets over there, everything is connected. And then we have two floors for the same setup, there is one smelter, directly into one constructor producing quick wire. So eight constructors producing quick wire. And an interesting part of this setup is the manifold that I actually developed for this particular case. And I think this is like one of the better ways of connecting everything when you have the same machine uh, on the two floors. So this is done with the conveyor lift call over there that is connected directly to one machine over there. And then it's being connected over here for the merger or splitter to another machine over here. This way I have only one belt, one set of the mergers, everything is connected via lifts in the vertical sort of a stack. On the level number three we have a bunch of constructors for steel pipes, steel beams and the steel screws over there. Uh, not a lot of density over here. After that we have two constructors for the stators. Over there I have the motor assembler and finally I have the whole level for the five assemblers that are producing rotors. So there's that and after that obviously we have level Four. Here we have all the constructors for silica and the crystal quartz over there. And finally over here we have one single level for the assemblers, uh, one for the silicon circuit boards and two for the AI limiters. And after that we have our manufacturer for the high speed connectors obviously. Uh, so there is that. This is not a lot of density over here. As you can see from the other side it's even better. So yeah, this is the full stack for the module number C. So the good question is how everything is connected. Alright, so where are all the connections? Well, this is quite simple. First of all, the imports, the raw resource intakes, uh, they are over here under the skirt, sort of. Uh, so they are always on the one side, this is like left side if you face your blueprint, if you face your entrance. So there are just conveyor lift calls over there and I have bright label over here. So even without the flashlight you can see where is the connection over there, over there. And then we have the next one over here, over here and once again over there. So for the indentation this is really important so there are two blueprints connecting over here and the indentation is the easy way of exposing the connection points over here so you can make conveyor lifts like that or you can make them well like that. This way you will see uh, basically nothing but in this fashion you will see all the resources traveling up and down. Then we have the power connection over here. All the power connections are done vertically. Nothing goes horizontally on the outside and the reason for that 
because well I will have several separate circuits in other modules just do the vertical connection and the same goes for the several levels uh, higher uh, the design a bit different but the principle is the same so you have your power connections you have your lift connections then we have the final level over here once again different design the same principle uh, the question is how do you connect your main power between the blueprints and there is the internal bus over here internal circuit the main circuit of sorts for example over here we have two different blueprints and they are not being connected by the power and to connect the power chain the mains you need just to extend power line from this outlet to this outlet so there is that We are doing things like radio control units, supercomputers, computers, batteries, aluminium, rubber, plastic, crystal oscillators and even control rods. A lot of things going on here and there is a lot of imports. We are importing plastic, we are importing rubber and we are importing aluminium ingots. Well, why is that? Well, this is like built-in factory, why I'm not handling plastic on the side? Well, first of all, the logistics. Usually I want to plop this factory, this module storage somewhere where I have raw ores like copper, iron, coal, deuterium to some extent. Oil is usually in some place different. I want to export finished resource. And once again, the finished resource like plastic and rubber, it takes a lot of space to make. For example, if I want to make like just 45 plastic with the most efficient recipe in the game, I will need two blueprints, like seriously. I need two blueprints to produce 45 plastic. So this is as bad as it gets, <laughs> you know? So yeah, I want to import such a huge numbers of rubber and plastic. Same goes for the aluminium ingots, they are basically the same, they are not as bad, but they still takes a lot of space. So this is the rough approximation how I grouped everything in, in the actual blueprint layout. We have a lot of manufacturers and the rule of thumb over here, I know that I could not place more than three manufacturers per blueprint. Three manufacturers is the limit and well, two manufacturers is not going to happen. So this need to be overclocked. Same goes over here, 2.4, I can overclock that with uh, well power shards and once again this is the overclocked manufacturer over there so i do not go over 2.5 and once again i do not go over than three manufacturers in one single blueprint uh, for the foundry level it's quite simple we have smelters for the deuterium we have uh, production of steel pipes there as well because it's easier like this uh, then we have the next level with well all the things copper sheets and circuit boards over there so yeah a total of 16 constructors uh, six assemblers for the circuit boards obviously one of them is overclocked then we have the whole level for the Ethereum computers, insulated crystal oscillators, quartz crystals, quick wire, AI limiters, a lot of things going on here. Finally, we have the things like, well, super state computers, classical batteries, radio control units, quick wire stators, and electromagnetic control rods and aluminum casings. Yes, a lot of things going on here. But what is really important is alternative recipes. So some recipes are a bit convoluted, for example, classic battery. Why is that? Well, I'm producing aluminum sheets on site and also I don't want to use fluids. For the fluids, I will need to have the pumps, I will need to handle the refineries. This is no go for the layout like this. Classical battery here. Since I am producing batteries on the side, I can just use super state computers. It's just better recipe if you are producing batteries. Uh, next thing is quick wire starter. Mentioned it before. It's just better this way, using less space. Uh, then we have things like Ethereum computers. So I'm actually a fan of crystal computers, but the thing with the crystal computers, it's just using way more space. And if I want to have a big production ratio of of the computers itself. Well, I want to use Ketirum computer and for this exact reason I'm using this recipe. Uh, then we have the insulated crystal oscillator. Usually I'm not a fan of this recipe because it is using rubber. But in this particular case we are already using rubber for, well, Ketirum computers. And you guess what? We have the insulated crystal oscillator just next door that is also using rubber. So if we are importing rubber, why not to use both recipes in the conjunction? So there is win-win over here. Alright, so here we go, the full stack of the full blu 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 blueprints in the game. What is that? Well, this is the one blueprint for the foundries and smelters. Over here I have one smelter for iron ingots going directly into solid steel ingots and then this goes directly into the steel pipes. Uh, quite a simple ratio. And over there we have all the foundries for the copper alloy ingots. Obviously some of them are overclocked. After that we have full level for the Keterium ingot smelters over here. 
total eight of them. And after that, we have the second level with the constructors for the copper sheets, eight constructors over here, then eight more over there on the second floor. And finally, we have a total of six assemblers for the circuit boards. Uh, once again, uh, you can totally do six assemblers in line like this. So over here, we have the connection from down below. Uh, this is the connection for the plastic for all six assemblers for the conveyor lift holes. And over here on top, we have one manifold for our copper sheets. And once again, the copper sheets are done over here with two floors of constructors and they are fitting directly into assemblers over here. And then the whole thing of the copper sheets is manifolds upstairs in the next several blueprints. Level three is very important. We have two manufacturers over here for our crystal oscillators and another one for the Caterium computers. So over here we are converting our Caterium ingots into quickwire starter, uh, into the quickwire and well, quickwire starters as well. What I am doing over here, for example, for this manufacturer, I want to have 250 quick wire per minute. So I'm just taking two constructors over here and I'm overclocking them to this exact ratio. 90 plus 120, I have 210. And then I directly connect that to the manufacturer. Same goes for the quick wire starters over here in this assembler. I need to have 90 quick wire per minute. And this is being handled by this constructor with 90 quick wire being overclocked to 150%. Then we have our crystal oscillators and over here I, I will need to have crystal quartz. This is handled by one single constructor overclocked to 200%. Then we have a bunch of AI limiters in the assembler over there and over here. So electromagnetic control rods, once again, they are handled over here in the blueprint number three. Same goes for the AI limiters. A lot of things going on, but well, we need to connect everything and everything just works, you know, magic. <laughs> Level number four is a bit simpler than it looks. And over here, I have the things like batteries, radio control units and super static computers. I don't have any aluminum production anywhere and basically all the aluminum production is being handled over here and it is simpler than it looks. So first of all we have aluminum casing production over here, just aluminum ingots into aluminum casing. Then we have the things like aluminum alcat sheets. So once again I'm handling all the copper ingots from down below, I'm just feeding them straight directly over here. Quite a lot of uh, well belt work but well kind of necessary if I want to use this particular recipe over here with aluminum sheets. Only other thing is wires, so I have a total of 4 constructors for my super state computers that require wires. After that we have our classical batteries, once again import of sulfur, import of plastic and we are producing alcat aluminum sheets on this particular level, same goes for the wires. Yeah, surprisingly wires also are handled over here. After that we are handling the things like radio control units, once again we are importing crystal oscillators and computers from the level 3 and we have aluminum casing over here. What is actually really important? This radio control unit thing is overclocked quite a lot and this will require quite a lot of computers and crystal oscillators. There is the feature in this blueprint where you can increase ratio of well computers and crystal oscillators and for that you can just disable the radio control units. Quite simple. How do I handle that? Well this is way simpler than it looks. I just have separate power chain. So over here I have the connection that is that is completely separate from main power chain and this thing is being connected on the separate line all the way up to the first blueprint over here here and finally over here we have just simple toggle single switch that just disconnect the main power from radio control unit production so we can have either five radio control units per minute and rather low ratios for the things like computers and crystal oscillators like two crystal oscillators per minute and 1.4 computers per minute or we can increase this ratio to something like five computers per minute and like 3.75 crystal oscillators it is completely doable you just need to flip one switch or maybe you just want to wait until this container is full of radio control units. And final bit are the adjustments for the previous blueprints. There are several adjustments, both visual and functional. For example, I change the lighting level everywhere to setting number two, and I remove all the light emissions from the boards for the items. Because, well, you know, having all these bright lights straight into your eyes is not great and it get old really fast. And obviously the module storage is the place that you visit quite a lot, so it better to be more natural than something that shine bright into your eyes, you know? There's that. There's also the bug about the visual 
visuals over here i have the pixelated image you can avoid that by increasing the emission level but well when you load your save it can go either way so i do not know any correlation i just doesn't know you know it's just weird after that we have the hmf toggle this is an upgrade for the steel module before that i was producing 2 hmf now i'm producing 4.22 and i have hmf toggle why do i need hmf toggle well i did not really change all the other ratios the intake is pretty much the same all the machinery is the same i only overclock the hmf manufacturer if i have the maximum production rate and hmf is on i will have lesser production ratios for the steel pipes it will be zero and same goes for the module frame but over here i will have only 0.7 so if you want production ratio of the module frames up you just go and turn off your hmf with this toggle if you have the full container of hmf obviously it will go up but before that you have the toggle this is the same as the setup for radio control units and this will be actually really important in the next video when i will be doing things like fuse module frames and turbo motors this is not a gimmick this is something that will be functional in the next video so there's that and if you never exported blueprints you will need to do this manually you need to go to your system disk users your username app data local factory game saved save games blueprints there your game session would create a folder once you have blueprints unlocked in your progression and have created first blueprint every blueprint consists from two parts .sbp file with parts and items and .sbp cfg file with text description and color settings and well there's the end of the video so thank you very much for watching have a nice one and until next time yakis out <laughs>